Hello everybody, Ministorm here. Welcome back to Final Fantasy XIV Online Stormblood. In the last episode, we began our assault on Specula Imperatoris, an imperial facility in the peaks. And things were going some uh, fairly well. And uh, that is when Fordola showed back up, having whatever procedure done to her. And uh, she, well, she arrived at Castrum Abania, which is armed with a massive cannon, and order that the cannon be fired on Speculum Imperatoris, particularly the main tower, which was done, and uh, the main tower was basically destroyed uh, with not only resistance forces, but imperial forces in the tower, so, you know, she fired upon her own men, um, Fortunately, Lise and Alphano were able to escape the tower, but Conrad was mortally wounded and he ended up dying, but not before he transferred command of the resistance to Lise. So, we'll be proceeding on to see what happens from here. But, even despite the losses, it was technically a victory. So, you know, we'll just be pressing on. And I guess Castor Mabania is going to be one of our next targets. Because uh, they're about to follow up with a second shot. But Astinian showed up and destroyed the Ceruleum uh, fuel lines that powered the cannon. So, that's a welcome reprieve there. Alright. So, for today, I think first thing we're going to do is we're back over here. At the other side of the map, at Alagana, because I want to grab this quest, the side quest that gives an ether current, because I did go ahead and go around the entire map, and I picked up all of the ether currents on the map. So we just need the ether currents from quests. We haven't done any of them yet. So we'll go ahead and grab this one from Ragenfrid and uh, see what he needs. And then hopefully we'll get the rest of these. Alright, he would like to introduce us to an old friend. Alright. Fancy yourself as our village's savior, do you? If you truly mean what you say, I have a mind to introduce you to someone. His name's Sayer. He used to be one of the quarry's finest workers, he did. He keeps fighting the good fight to restore Alagana to its former glory, but I do worry about the toll it must be taking on a man of his years. Have a chat with him if you're interested in helping. Certainly. And he's over here. Alright, thank you for coming. I'm still waiting for a few more of the villagers to arrive. And the old bugger's treating us to another one of his speeches, I see. How long do you plan uh, to continue living as an abject squalor, I ask you? It's high time we brought back the quarry that once made me proud to hell from Alagana. Some of you may be too young to remember, but the quarry used to mean everything to this village. Bloody hells, when's this old codger gonna stop har harping on about the good old days? Time you open your eyes, you daft bugger. Our time's long since passed when we could sell the stone here for a decent amount of gill. It's about time you face the facts. There's no coin to be had sweating away your life in some bloody quarry. It'd be, I'd be better served going out and hunting my own food. Just hear me out. If you give up on the quarry, then, you, then you'll be given up on the village itself. Even the hardest of rocks will break if you keep chiseling away at it. Life's the same. Uh, grandfather, that's enough. Uh, I can tell 
I can tell you now that no one he here would claim to be happy with their lot. There's nothing that can be done. You remonstrating with everyone is hardly going to do any good. Uh, sweet love? Is that, yeah, sweet love? Well, what do you bloody expect with that attitude? No one's going to work on, uh, work to improve things when even my own granddaughter has next to no motivation. There's a reason you don't see much quarrying going on anymore. There's no demand for it. We can get by just fine with the stones we gathered in the past and those we salvaged from ruined buildings. Prosperity doesn't lie in wait for us at the quarry, only monsters. It's about time you realize that we're lucky just to be alive these days. Come on, Grandfather, let's go home. Blasted girl understands nothing. Of course, everything's going to seem pointless if you're only sleepwalking through life. And who in the hells are you, anyway? I ain't doing this for your amu amusement. I'm indeed the sayer you speak of. Regenfriend sent you my way, you say? Ayame, was it? So you're the last we have to thank for saving Warkrata? I can tell you've more fire in your belly than this entire village. Perhaps you'll be able to see that I'm not as crazy as these buggers think me. Alright. Alright. Alagana owes everything to the quarry. The stones we extracted were solid and pleasing to the eye to boot. We even supplied the stone used to build the palace. Ah, oh, those were the days. It was the Imperial Invasion that changed everything. Those bastards thought stone structures barbaric, favoring their cold, tasteless, metallic buildings instead. They say they look civilized. Don't make me laugh. The final blow to our way of life came when Garlemald began recruiting our youth for their own army. We lost just as many to the rebel cause, with no one left to tend the quarry. It slowly fell into ruin and now is now overrun with beasts. The few of us that remain have been left to eke out a living using any means we can. I swear on Ralgar's very name, if we could just take back the Sleeping Stones, this whole village would brim with vitality again. I just need something that proves the beasts are gone from the quarry. Then the villagers would surely see fit to help me restore it to its former glory. Now this is a lot to ask of a complete stranger, but it's not as if I'm spoiled for choice right now. Would you be able to rid the quarry of those damn monsters and bring me back two Urolith soul stones? I'll be forever in your debt. Obtain two Urolith soul stones from marble Uroliths. Seems simple enough. That's way over there. And that is actually going to be a long-ish ride. Because we can't go straight through here. That's a waterfall right there. So we have to go all the way... Actually, we'll probably head this way. They go all the way down and around here and up and around there. Actually, we may run into Uroliths before we get that far. We'll have to see. haven't seen any other Aether Current quests show up just yet, so this is the only one we have.
Unfortunately, there is an Aetherite back at the village, so once we get these, we're gonna just teleport back. Alright, I think these are our targets. Indeed they are. And there is a... Fate right here as well. But, we don't need to do the fate, we just need to get these guys. Soul stones, and that will complete this. Now, I believe this does lead to like a long quest chain where you do a lot of stuff to work on the quarry, but you know, I am just interested in the Aether Current at the moment. Alright, nice to see you returned. It, it'd be even nicer if you happened to be in possession of certain stones. Which I am. Yes, this is exactly what I was after. Let's waste no time in showing them to the others. It's been far too long since the last ray of hope shone into the villagers' miserable lives. Alright. But I'm busy with other things, so we will move on. Alright, let's check. Yep, still no other Aether current quests, so we'll just head back to Alagiri and continue on with the main story quest. All right, Alphano. The question of how to move forward in Conrad's absence looms large in Alphano's mind, okay? All right, all Alliance and Resistance units have now withdrawn from Specula Imperatoris. It is time we spoke with General Alden. Alright, Ralbon. Alright, these deaths weigh heavy on my soul. Commander Kemp's most of all. He was a wise leader, he was a patriot, but above all else, he was a good man who will be sorely missed. One of many lost this day. I ask for a moment's silence to pray for the souls of the departed. We have suffered a grievous defeat. We can, we cannot and will not renounce this cause. The die has been cast. Hold tight to this grief, this anger, and let it drive you forward. Let it be your strength and your shield when next you face the enemy. You'll carry us far, General. Of that we have, I have no doubt. Ere we take another step toward Alamigo, however, we must first address the question of how to deal with Castrum Abanius Cannon. If the Imperials are willing to employ the weapon without thought for their own soldiers' safety, we may struggle to approach them. A frontal assault is out of the question. We'd lose countless men before we even reach the walls. Would we? 
Recall that the Imperials could have obliterated our forces had they kept firing, but neglected to do so. They had no strategic reason to cease fire, which begs the question, why did they? We suspect they were unable to fire the cannon again, mayhap due to a malfunction? Or one of their officers found his conscience after the first barrage, or a heretofore unknown resistance faction chose that moment to disable it. There are many possibilities, but the fact remains that they stopped when logic dictated they continue. Then I'll just have to go and see for myself if the cannon is still operational. Are you mad? Conrad put you in charge of the resistance. We can't risk losing another commander so soon. I know how you feel, Nago. I do, but I need you to understand. It wasn't long after Papalimo and I arrived at Ralgar's, Ralgar's Reach that Conrad first asked me to join the Resistance, and then he kept on asking. Every time I said no, I told myself it was because of the Scions, but even then I knew deep down that it was an excuse, that I was still afraid of following my heart because I couldn't be sure if it was for me or for Ida. But then I met someone on the other side of the world who had struggled with the same worries, and as we traveled and fought together, I saw him grow and become the leader his people needed him to be. And now it's my turn to do the same. There's a lot... There's not a lot of us left, and the ones that are... And of the ones that are, many are still wounded. We have to make do with what we've got, and I'm the best qualified. It's as simple as that. But don't worry, Nago. I'll come back, I promise. Alright, well, I acknowledge Commander Hext's right to carry out this mission. I see no reason why she should do it so alone. Ayame, would you go with her? <laughs> Someone's got to keep her out of harm's way. No, I would have done it if you hadn't, even if you hadn't asked. Yeah. Then it is settled. We will await your return. All right. Let's, let's talk to Lise. All right. Sorry to drag you into this, Ayami. I didn't walk quite far enough. Alright, it may not be the decision Conrad would have made, but I'm not Conrad. I never will be. I don't know what kind of leader I was hoping for, but right now all I can do is be myself. Alright, we don't need the stuff, so... Take... The materia. Alright. Alright, if you don't mind, I'd rather not wait around and have people try to talk me out of it. Let's get moving. I know a good vantage point overlooking the castrum. Uh, Nyunkref... Nyunkref's Hope? The ship strand on the rocks to the east of here. It shouldn't take us long to get there. Oh, but there might be some ancient golems guarding it. Or that might be an old wives' tale. Either way, it's worth the risk. At uh, least, uh, Commander, I pray you proceed with all due caution. Do not hesitate to call upon us if needed. All right, to reach the ship, we'll have to, to scale the cliff face. I'll get some climbing gear and meet you there, all right? And I think a few more side quests have appeared here, but still nothing with an aether current. All right, so we're heading over there. Guardian beast, huh?
Uh, shouldn't be too tough to deal with. Done. Alright, let's keep waiting for Lise. Sorry to keep you waiting. I see you've met the golems. Looked like the old stories were true, eh? In a way, I'm glad. Right then, time to climb. <sighs> Woo, that took a bit more out of me than I expected. And here she is. Nyun Krep's Hope. The Ark that one man made to save countless others from the Flood during the Sixth Umbral Era. It's comforting to think that there have always been people who cared this much about their fellow man. Who accomplished such great feats that people couldn't help thinking they must be made up. But the proof's right here, isn't it? I don't just mean the ship, you know. I mean you. Long before anyone started calling you a hero, you were there for those in need. You did things for people when you didn't have to, sometimes even when they didn't want you to. It can't have been easy, staying true to yourself. But we're all better for it, me included. I'll never be a leader like Conrad, or Hien, or my father. But I can be a friend to you all, and I can fight by your side. I can be me, and that'll just have to be enough, eh? Strange to think back on it. If we'd been standing in different places, or if the shell had struck the tower differently, it would have been me instead of Conrad, or maybe both of us. What kind of monster murders their own? Uh, is that smoke from Castor Mabania? Wait, it's coming from the cannon. I can't tell what hat what happen from here, but I can tell that it won't be giving us any trouble in the immediate future. This is our chance, Ayami, to avenge Comrade and all the others who died in the tower, friend and foe. To take Kashmabani and bring the bastards who gave the order to fire to justice. It won't be easy after the losses we took, but I know everyone's clamp, uh, chopping at the bit to strike back. With the right plan, I'm certain we can do it. Alright, we have to tell the others, come on. Alright. Lise? Easier down than up, eh? Though not necessarily safer. Anyway, no time to rest. We need to convince the others to strike now before the Imperials have time to fix their cannon. Alright. There's no time to lose. Ayame, General Alden needs to know what we saw. Yes. Yes, we are going to go report back. And I'm guessing the assault on the Castrum is going to involve myself and several other adventurers. Probably three other adventurers, to be precise.
Alright, you are returned. I only hope you bring good news. We scaled the cliffs of Nuncrep's Hope and spied smoke rising from Castro Mabania's main cannon. I think Marshal Tarpin's right. They didn't fire again because they couldn't. The cannon seems to have been disabled somehow. Though you must attack Castro Mabania at once. Hmm, it could still be a trick, but if it isn't, we may not get a better opportunity. Bluntly, General, if it is a trick, it is an utterly baffling stratagem. Had the Imperials wished to wipe us out, they could have they could simply have kept firing. Be that as it may, we need not risk everything to seize it. I say we dispatch a small contingent to infiltrate the castrum and secure control of the weapon. If the enemy is preoccupied with repairs, we may be able to take them unawares. If, on the other hand, it is indeed a trick, our token force will prove an elusive target, and we will at least know the cannon is operational. Either way, it seems well worth the risk, but how are we to infiltrate the castrum? In anticipation of a day such as this, men and women under my command have labored long to cultivate a network of informants throughout Girabania, including Radiata. Radiata is home to many who hold menial positions at Castro Mabania and other nearby installations. With the aid of our allies there, I believe we can secure a route into the fortress. The Resistance will handle this. You may have recruited these informants, but they'll be just as happy working with fellow Alamegans. And at the end of the day, it's our land, our responsibility. Let us do right by Conrad. I should be glad to accompany her, General, as would Ali say in Ayami, I am sure. Well then, if you are all in agreement, I see no reason to refuse you. Right, we'll make ready to march on Castro Mabania. Go and may Rolger watch over and keep you. Alright. Alpha no? Okay. And my apologies for speaking on your behalf. It would seem my sister's forthright manner is rubbing off on me. I confess, my decision to volunteer was not wholly motivated by concern for Lise, nor less Alamigo. Castromabani is the largest Imperial facility in the Peaks, you see, and so the likelihood that Kryle is being held captive there is quite high. Dealing with that cannon remains our main objective, of course, but if there is even a chance that Kryle might be rescued in the process, I would never forgive myself if I did not take it. No, we don't need any of that stuff. Alright. So, to review, we are to travel to Radiata, where we will meet with a contact recruited by Marshal Tarpin's agents. I took the liberty of reviewing intelligence reports with... Well, uh, while Ayame and Lise were away, so the settlement is not wholly unfamiliar to me. As the Vice Marshal indicated, the vast majority of the populace is employed as menial labor in either Specula Imperatoris or Castor Mabania. Perhaps as a result of this, the Resistance has long struggled to make inroads there. Uh, this is Monago. Ah, oh, you have the right of it. They got a better deal than most Alamegans, uh, feeding off what scraps the Imperials gave them. Damned if I know how Marshal Tarpin's agents got one of them to turn his coat. I understand your disdain, but I also understand their desire to look after their families by any means necessary. Our contact is a Rogadin woman. She will ask us a question. After we answer with courage, she will know us as friends. Courage, right. Put together a squadron, Nago. We'll need them soon. Be my friends, and be ready for anything. And there, we finally have one of the things we've been looking for. A quest with an Aether Current. From Brazen Brook here. Let's go ahead and grab it. Brazen Brook needs help with a rather delicate situation. Okay. Hey, you're that adventurer everyone's been talking about, aren't you? Just a woman I need wanted to see? You've a bit of time to spare, I hope. Uh, a bit. Alright, it seemed a bloody miracle we managed to take Alighieri without spilling a drop of blood. 
It was all thanks to one man, a man the Alliance would very much like to speak with. Getting him to come in for question, however, has proven more trouble than we thought. It's not my place to be dealing with this, to be honest with you, but I think it'd be best to resolve the matter quietly if possible. Things could get messy around here if the Alliance or the Resistance start kicking up a fuss. I like to draw attention if I leave my post, but you adventurers are free to move about as you please. So what do you say? Can you give me a hand? Sure. Your adventurers are good folk. Now, I really shouldn't say much more out here in the open. You'd best go and speak with him yourself, but Bot's his name. He can tell you the rest. Alright, he's apparently over here. Alright, the adventurer who slew Lord Van Balesar? So they sent you to claim my head, then. Brazen Brook sent you to help? Oh, thank heavens. You see, I'm actually a centurion of the Garlean forces. Now, before you do anything rash, let me explain. When I learned of the Allied forces' approach, I knew we had no way of repelling them, so I ordered all of my men to retreat from Algiri, then planned to turn myself in, but I ran into certain complications. I can see you're unconvinced. Tell you what, why not ask the villagers about me? When you hear what they have to say, I think you'll come to understand why I couldn't turn myself in. Jidialani? What? The place wouldn't be the same without him, and we certainly have no intentions of sending him to be butchered by the Alliance. Okay. Wait, Harry? Uh, where'd you hear that name? I won't have anyone speaking ill of him unless you're looking to pick a fight. You'll keep your mouth shut. Okay. And... Funk. Alright, what do you want with Bot? He's not in trouble, is he? We already told the Alliance scum they can't have him. Okay. Alright, there you are. Now do you see the cause for my hesitation? In light of their reaction to my being arrested, the Alliance has allowed me to remain here for the time being, but for all intents and purposes, I am a war prisoner. The villagers initially meant to keep me hidden, but harboring one's enemy is a serious crime, no matter whose side you're on, and I've heard what the Alliance does to those who help the Garleans. The stuff of nightmares, I tell you. My execution is assured the moment they take me into custody, but the villagers should take arms and protest. They don't they don't deserve such a bloody fate. Brazenbrook has made a valiant effort to assuage the people's anger, but there's only so much a man in his position can do. I know how strange this may seem, but I want you to convince the people of Alagiri to allow for my surrender. Well, I got the Aether current, so you know. We're probably not going to deal with that. Alright, well, what I think we'll do here is go ahead and end the episode here. And then we will proceed on to... What was it called? 
Radiata there. When we come back next episode, and then we'll proceed on towards the Castrum and uh, see how it is that we're going to deal with the facility. All right, but for now, hope you guys enjoyed it. Thanks for watching. Go ahead, like, subscribe, and comment, and I will see you next time.